Hey everybody, grace and peace to you. And we are going to continue our segment in this four minute faith press with the word Shema. We've been talking about Hebrew words. The Shema, S-H-E-M-A, is the most central text in all of scripture. It comes out of Deuteronomy 6, 4. And so uh, we're gonna be looking at this for the next few weeks because if you miss the Shema, then it's hard to really understand what God is trying to tell us through the scripture. So let's start with the practice. I wanna invite you to put your pinky into the air. My daughter and I end most of our nights in this way. When she is in bed, I'll go tuck her in and we'll put pinkies in the air and we'll say this, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Say that with me, Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ahad. It means, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. The word Shema means hear. Now in Hebrew, the words and the ideas and the way of practicing faith in Hebrew is earthy. It's practical. In the Greek, the idea of religion was always conceptual. It was always about ideas that you held in your heads. So Greek has more to do with philosophy. Hebrew has more to do with practicality, about actually utilizing your hands, getting your feet dirty. It's an earthy way of thinking about religion. So when the Shema says to hear, to a Greek hearer, they would think, oh, that means to hear and to put words and ideas in our heads to learn doctrine. In the Hebrew mentality, it actually would mean more than that. Yes, it would mean to comprehend what God is saying, but it would mean to diffuse it into your heart and let it leak out of your life. To hear in the Hebrew means that we integrate what we know into what we do. And I can't tell you how much of Christianity today is being criticized because we know so much here and yet the world feels like we do so little out there. And that's convicting for me as a pastor. It's convicting for me as a Christian of wanting to make sure that I integrate what it is I say I'm about and who I worship and what I believe with my life. So when we hear, when the scriptures tell us to hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, it means what is God speaking that we're not just supposed to know, but we're supposed to see come through our lives. And so we're gonna look at this word for the next couple of weeks. And I would say it's the most prayed scripture throughout all of the Jewish faith. Uh, they say it three times a day. It is the most central passage in all of the Bible. And even Jesus will come and repeat it. He would have said it three times a day. And for him, it would have been the most central prayer in scripture of his life as well. So I'm going to unpack that over the next couple of weeks. But for today, here's what I would invite you to do. This week, read Matthew 5 through 7. There's just three short chapters. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And as you do it, I want you to think, God, what are you saying to me here? Just one thing that you're wanting me through the teaching of Jesus to integrate more out here, whether it's forgiveness, generosity, love, kindness. What is it that you're concretely, specifically calling me to show up for in this world? So let's close by putting our pinkies back in the air. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Next week, I'm going to tell you why we put the pinkies in the air. God bless, and I hope to see you soon.